dynamic expressions and all of the possible uh, data sources that are available to you are really what sets the Bubble platform apart from other website builders. This is how you can create really customized interactive applications. Okay, your data is custom organized within your database. Your front end designs are custom uh, configured and it is up to you to manipulate the data that you're collecting from your users to put together the logic that you need for a custom experience and present everything to the user in an easy to consume way um, in, a, in a way that's actually useful for them because they've come to your app for a reason, right? You might be solving a big problem. You might be making their lives easier in some way. Uh, and so this is kind of the heart of everything is the logic that you create through these dynamic expressions. Of course, within the context of everything else, within the designs, right? The layouts within the database architecture um, and just the workflows. Dynamic expressions are really the building blocks of those workflows, of your conditions uh, to make things actually happen and to make things appear in the way that you want um, on the front end. So let's take a quick look at um, what I mean when I say dynamic expression and what I mean when I say data sources. Okay, so let's have a, a very simple example here. I'm gonna add a text to my page and immediately we see this little blue flag, insert dynamic data. Now, I could just type in a static text. I could say, hello world, right, it's me, and it will display exactly that. There is nothing dynamic about this. It is a fixed static piece of text. Or I could have dynamic data, which is information that can come from some source. Now that source could be the database, it could be an input that's on the page. It could be a plugin. It could be another integration that you have with an API. Um, a few different sources available to you. When you open up this expression composer, right? So that blue flag came up, I clicked on it. Bubble gave me this window. It's gonna present me with my possible options. Now it doesn't mean that every single choice can get me something that I want. It just means that I could um, potentially use that as a jumping point because sometimes your expressions are gonna be kind of a chain of things coming together to get the right result. For example, if I wanted to sum up an order total, I might look at the orders related line items, subtotals, and then add them all up, right? So I'm going through like two different tables and performing a math calculation on a list of numbers from there. Well, we will see that uh, in one of our demos around the shopping cart. But this is the starting point here, is the list of data sources available to you. So an easy example is stuff that Bubble provides just automatically for you. So for example, the current date and time. This is a dynamic expression. The date and time is always changing, right? So if I were to preview this page in this moment, when I load the page, Bubble's going to show me the current date and time. And if I reloaded the page after two minutes, that time is going to change, right? Right now it's 3.44 in the afternoon. If I refresh the page after two minutes, it's gonna say 3.46. This is dynamic, right? I do not have to anticipate a date and time. Further, uh, from your dynamic expressions, you may have the ability to manipulate them. So with a date specifically, right? I can click on this and you see there's a little text there that says more. I'll click on that. Now I can manipulate my date. I can extract different date components, right? I can just pull out the date of the month or just pull out the minute that I'm currently in. Or I can add time to this date and time. Maybe I wanna um, set up a workflow where I'm defining an expiration on something. So when I want to save some, some records, let's say it's a listing, right? In an auction type of website like eBay. And, I, and the user publishes their listing and the application wants to save an expiration date of uh, 30 days from now. So we'll take the current date and time and add 30 days, right? I'll just type in 30. So now this is a changed value. I'm gonna refresh the page again. So today is August 9th. So it's gonna add 30 days and Bubble is is doing calendar aware math here, right? We're not gonna get a funky date. Um, it knows that August has a certain number of days in the month before it needs to move into September. So 30 days from now is September 8th. So at the top, we have the most popular things. Current user 
is simply a shortcut to the user record of the person who is logged in. Um, there's another way to get to that record, but this is, you know, you're often referring to the current user. If the user is logged in, if they're logged out, if their uh, type, if their user type is defined as an admin versus a customer or something, you can create a lot of conditions around who the current user is. Um, and so the value of this is a user. Um, now Bubble is flagging this, it's in red. This is not a good expression because I'm in a text element. And this expression does not evaluate to a text. I have simply pointed to a user record, not a text. The record holds text values, such as the user's name, right? Like this. Now this is a good expression because it's compatible with my text element. And you're going to find that's a very important thing to be aware of when you're creating your expressions is compatibility of the value that you're trying to get to and the, the, the vehicle that you're, you're putting it in. So if it's a text element like this, or if it's in a condition, or if it's in a workflow action, you need to make sure that things match, that the format of the value matches the thing that you're putting it in. Um, also, the, um, if it's a single value versus a list of values, that will also create some type compatibility issues if you don't have those right. Um, we'll see other examples of those as well. So here I can display the current user's name. I believe I'm currently logged in as the user we signed up as because Bubble will automatically log you in. So I should see, yep, there's my name, Jane Doe. I signed up as that person in our previous example. Um, and so that's who we're seeing there. Another popular common data source and one that you're actually going to use quite a lot is this one right here, do a search for. This is how you search your database. Um, you first have to define the data type, the table that you want to search, and then you can get specific from there. You can create constraints to find the exact thing that you want from there. So let's say I want to search through all of my users. And again, this is not a compatible expression because the result of this search is a list of users. I don't have anything that's actually text that can be printed as a text. I could go to the users. You see all these different manipulations here. I could go to the user's names, each item's name. So what I'm going to get here is every single user's names, just comma separated. Okay, so let me refresh the page here. Actually, I actually don't know if my users have, no, I think they do, I think they do. In the database, there we go. Yeah, those are my user's names in my database. This was the last one that was added. Okay, um, I could also just count up how many users I have and I can mix and match my expressions in most places, not everywhere, but in most places I can mix and match dynamic with static. So I can say, give me the count of all of the users in my database and just say, you know, 10 users or six users. I'm not really sure how many I have in there. Let's refresh the page um, and we'll see this come together, right? So I'm creating a, a, a more helpful display of this information. Sorry, it's in the upper left corner. I should probably put some spacing around there, uh, but we see seven users, right? This is a mix of dynamic information with some static information. Okay, so I just wanted to introduce you to the concept of data sources. So data comes from a shortcut to the current user, comes from a general search of your database, comes from um, you know information that Bubble just kind of has standing by at all times, um, and being able to manipulate those things. I'm gonna show you one more, another one that's also common that we'll look at a bit more as well, if I have an input here, okay? Uh, and right, I can say, maybe this input's placeholder says, type in your name, okay? And this text is gonna say, another mix, hello, comma, and then we'll do the input's value. Whatever I typed in there, hello, comma, and then the input's value. Okay, so right now it doesn't say anything. I'm gonna do, uh, hello, Gabby. Okay, so there's my name. It's just pulling directly. For, this is not coming from the database. It's just kind of a real-time um, reference to something that's happening on the page in that moment. 